on your screen right now is a drone shot of Super Value. This is Mackey Street. Already, as you can see, it's a little past eight, and the lines are very long. Many persons are there and trying to get those off goods as we continue through the emergency orders here in the capital. And of course, uh, in this area, traffic is relatively slow uh, as it is uh, throughout the island. Many persons still not to work and just making those important rounds throughout the island. This morning, I'm also joined by Sergeant Crestonia Johnson from the Royal Bahamas Police Force Traffic Division, who's giving us an initial look at overnight traffic. A pleasant good morning to you and a pleasant good morning, Bahamas. Well, overnight, we have had four accidents involving damages and four accidents involving injury. If you've been keeping up with social media, you would have seen that one of those accidents involved a police vehicle. That At this point, we now have two persons that remain hospitalized as a result of being involved in that traffic accident. And that brings our number up now to 13 persons who are now hospitalized as a result of being involved in a traffic accident. Well, um, Officer Johnson, like myself, uh, I, like many persons, uh, saw that video yesterday. was very shaken, uh, very concerned for those officers. And, of course, uh, we definitely want to continue uh, getting updates on their conditions. Uh, But any update for the motoring public? Of of course, we know during this time, many emergency vehicles, including police officers, fire officers, ambulances, and so forth, will be making the rounds around the island. What can the motoring public do to better protect themselves as they're traversing. Yes, well, you mean then we know, of course, that we're going to have emergency vehicles on the street. They are needed. We're going to, we have to increase when it comes to security. We have to increase the security, increase the enforcement of some things that we have according to the curfew, etc. So we expect to have emergency vehicles on the street. So we're reminding drivers as much as possible to, to please traverse the streets with added care and caution. At the end of the day, everybody wants to get home safely. You want to be able to go where you have to go and return and be with your families. So we're asking the general public as much as possible. If you're at an intersection and you do hear a siren or even if you don't hear a siren, if you're at an intersection, you're about to cross, even sometimes I do it in my personal vehicle, I stop to a light. Even if my light is on green, I make sure that intersection is clear before I proceed. So I'm asking the motoring public as much as possible to please, before you proceed, just take a look at your surroundings. Be mindful that, hey, vehicles, emergency vehicles are going to be on the street. They need to traverse the areas. So please be on the lookout. Be more vigilant. Now, yesterday, Officer Frazier and I, we spoke about uh, the number of persons or some concerns, rather, of persons who were out on the streets beyond the curfew. And, of course, I know that police have certain protocols in place, including some barricades that you're using as a part of your measures to ensure that only those who need to be on the road are there. What other measures has the uh, Royal Bahamas Police Force taken to uh, secure the streets during the curfew? Well, in addition to those barricades that are up, and we have the Defense Force officers as well as police officers, Assist, assisting. We also are added with medical personnel who, who um, traverse the streets, as well as personnel from the traffic department. You'll see the motorcyclists out there as well. So yes, I'm going to be out there on the streets. We're going to be stopping the vehicles as they go. Majority of persons who we have seen so far traversing the streets are persons who have in their possession a letter from the government giving them permission to be on the street at that particular time. And like I said, they're usually medical professionals. They're persons who are returning, who are going to and from work. They're security officers. So yes, so far, so good as a team to the evening time and persons adhering to the curfews. We've had one or two persons who have had their doors closed. This is um, the business owners now who have had their doors closed, but they were still serving people um, when the police officers passed, yes. So we are going to be enforcing the rules of the road as as we go. We are going to be enforcing this this curfew and making sure that everybody at the end of the day is safe and we are are, um, virus free. And another question I'd like to follow up with like many persons, I am very cautious of that 9 p.m. curfew. And I try to get most of my business done by 7. So at least I have about two hours if I need. And I don't need that much, but about two hours to get home. Any advice uh, that you would offer for persons to ensure to avoid? Obviously, we know that traffic lines aren't as long as they normally are. But any advice for persons to get home on time and to avoid any possible delays once we're getting closer to that actual curfew? Yes. Automatically, once you said that, I'm going to give you kudos because... Because this is the exact thing that I encourage my family members, I encourage my colleagues, all of them to do. You know if you need supplies, if you need certain things, in order to get those things um, in your possession, you're going to have to leave out a little bit earlier to get these things secured. There were one or two persons who I've stopped and they were saying,
saying that they are coming from different locations. I'm saying, listen to me. Do not wait until that 9 o'clock hour. Do not wait until that hour to conduct any transaction. You want to, as soon as possible, get out, conduct your transactions, and get home in a safe in a safe time away from that 9 o'clock period. Um, even the other night, we have some, some persons who stated that they were coming from the airport, so we understand that. And we have our officers who understand your particular situation. We're not insensitive. We understand what's going on. However, as it pertains to drivers who do not need to be traversing the streets at that time or close to that time, please, please go indoors. Go indoors. Stay at home. I've, saw, I've seen some kids out in the yards playing. They're in the streets playing. So parents, again, you are responsible responsible for your kids and their well-being. Have your kids go inside in the appropriate time. Do not have these kids up and down in the streets. And then finally, we'll, we also know that prior to this, our entire curfew, uh, persons needed to uh, traverse with their driver's license and insurance certificates. Uh, have police uh, relaxed that policy or is that still uh, something that you uh, need to ensure the drivers have at all times? Well, remember now, the rules of the road and the laws have not changed. Everything is still in place. Everything is still going to work in decency and in order. So as it pertains to drivers having your driver's license with you or having your, your um, insurance papers or certificates, of title. All of these documents are still needed even now because you never know what's, what can happen. So we need to have, have these documents in our possession. All right, so some great information there to get your Tuesday morning started. Of course, we might be uh, under curfew, but of course, that doesn't mean we can't ensure that we're as safe as possible as we make our way around the Capitol and here in the Bahamas. Reporting from Mackey Street, Lloyd Allen, Officer Crestonia Johnson, Makushla, back to you in studio.